Would you be the jerk if you secretly ordered food so that you didn't have to give any to your kids? We'll get to that in a bit, but first, am I the jerk for having a dry wedding and serving only water for drinks? Okay, so basically, my husband and I are getting married later this year. Each of our sides of the family are fairly big. It'll be around 100 to 150 people total. My husband and I are paying for all of this ourselves, as well as my grandma who said she doesn't care one way or the other on this issue. She just loves weddings. We have a lot of kids in our family, so we decided against making it child free, but we did decide to make it dry. So there will be no alcohol of any kind at our wedding. Honestly, this doesn't have anything to do with there being kids there, but due to the fact that my fiancé and I don't drink. Nothing against people who do, it's just not for us and we don't want to. On top of that, we only really drink water. We rarely, if ever, drink soda. So most of the time it's only water with the occasional juice and milk. We don't even drink coffee. So obviously the food, which is a part my grandma's not paying for, is going to be expensive for that many people. We're having our wedding catered, so everyone will have a good choice of food to choose from, but to drink, only water will be provided. We don't want to have to pay for alcohol or soda, it's just a large added expense, when we can just do filtered water for a much cheaper cost. Well, when family and friends found out, they got angry. Some didn't really care, but some are really upset about it. Saying that I can just have an open bar so I don't have to pay for drinks, we could, but we still have to pay the bartender and we really just don't want to bother with the alcohol there. Or we should at least have soda because how can we expect everyone to drink only water? The kids will be upset, the wedding will be boring, this is not how weddings work, etc. So, am I the jerk? I didn't think this would be a problem, it's only water. I mean, don't most people drink water every day anyway? Should we pay extra to have soda to make the family happy? I know that if I went to this wedding, I'd prefer there to probably be some kind of soda option. I mean, I just, I feel like it's a little bizarre just to have only water. I personally like to think that it's their wedding and they can really do what they want to do, but it does sound a little overly restrictive. Do you guys think it makes them the jerk for just having only water and nothing but water? I'd like to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy getting to decide whether or not all of these people are jerks, want to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our next story is, am I the jerk for selling the house my brother and his family live in? A few years ago, my brother needed help. I let him move into one of my rental properties and we did it all legal, lease agreement and everything. Because I was renting to him at a break-even point, we agreed that he was responsible for all the maintenance of the house and yard. Well, he has four kids, and the hot water tank isn't enough for his family and he wants a new one. I told him to go ahead. He proceeded to take the cost of the hot water tank and installation out of that month's rent. I reminded him of our agreement. He said he wasn't making improvements to my property for free. I said that the old hot water tank was fine and he made the decision to replace it. Big argument and I didn't want to fight, so I said that he wasn't allowed to make any further changes to the house without my explicit agreement. So he stopped doing maintenance as a protest. The house itself is not pretty, but it's solid. It is old and the wiring in it wasn't meant for all the modern electronics we have. He wanted to add a new breaker box and run more outlets. I said no thanks, I can't afford that since I'm not making any money on the house. He started getting witchy about it and the rent started getting paid late. I tried talking to him but he said that he had to buy some stuff for the house and he was low on cash. So I sold the house. While the house itself isn't great, it is in an older part of the city and the property itself is a quarter of an acre. Every time a house sells in this neighborhood, it is snapped up by developers and turned into multi-family units, or one guy built a McMansion on his land. I know a lot of the developers and I didn't even need to list the house to have it sold in less than a week. My brother found out when he was served with an eviction notice. He called me to ask what the freak. So I told him that the house was causing me headaches and I had an opportunity to make some money and I took it. He said I should have offered him a chance to buy it. I said that he was having trouble making rent. How was he going to qualify for a mortgage? 
He said that I'm a jerk and that he has the money he was waiting to make me an offer. I asked him if he had money, why was he late on his rent? He started bad-mouthing me to all our family. A few of them took his side and tried to say that I was being a jerk, so I offered all of them a chance to clear his debt to me if they wanted to share their opinion. None of them took me up on the offer. My parents were on my side and they said I shouldn't have rented to him in the first place. I feel bad for my sister-in-law and the kids, but I'm not going to spend the rest of my life subsidizing his. I think this is just an ugly reality that can very well arise from doing something like allowing a family member to rent out a place you live in when you have to play the role of landlord. I don't blame OP for doing what they did and honestly it's impressive that they were capable of making those tough choices. Our next story is, am I the jerk for saying my son can make his own choices? My son is 18 and will graduate from high school in a few months. Lately, he's been fighting a lot with my wife and I. My wife isn't his biological mother, but she's been his mom since he was three. A week ago, they got into a big fight, and my wife got frustrated and yelled at him that she wasn't his mother. Since then, he's been completely cold to her, and when he does have to address her, he does so by her first name. My wife confiscated the keys to his car last night, but I gave them back this morning because he didn't curse at her, just called her by her name. Besides, I don't want to drive all the kids to school and then pick them up. My wife's upset and said that I really need to support her and talk to him. I think it's pointless. He's 18. If he doesn't want to call her mom, we really can't make him. My wife says I'm being a lazy jerk that just doesn't want to have a conversation with him. Maybe I am a jerk, but I did talk to him. He said he's not going to call her mom again ever. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? Even if we find a way to force him to, he's going to school out of state, so what will we do then? Just seems like a pointless battle that will only create more animosity. But maybe that's just what a lazy jerk would say. I honestly think OP's pretty on the money here. They had a big fight. She said, well, I'm not your mother. Well, they're 18 years old. Being told that is probably kind of crushing. And yeah, I think they're well within their right as an 18-year-old and an adult, even if she was his biological mother, to just call her by her name. This next story is, am I the jerk for criticizing my roommate's grooming habits harshly? I, 26-year-old male, currently live in a rented apartment with my roommate, 24-year-old male. Recently, we've been running into some issues because of his grooming. I occasionally noticed a funk coming off of him, and a few times it got bad enough to ask him to take a shower because it was distracting me and grossing me out. He apologized and said he had a lessened sense of smell, which made him less likely to realize he needed a shower. Sounded kind of BS to me, but he showered, so I didn't think anything of it. Our apartment has two full bathrooms in the hallway, and I ordered a bidet for mine. The other day I was installing it, and he happened upon me doing so. He asked what it was for, and I explained. He chuckled and said, You gay guys are something else. I laughed and said, it's less invasive than toilet paper and more effective. And he laughed and said, yeah, but I don't use that either. Something clicked in my head and I asked him for clarification. Apparently he never wipes. He says he thinks it's gross to rub his butt with a piece of paper that doesn't really do anything. He said no straight guy does and it's not a big deal. I asked what he does if he eats Taco Bell or something and he said he just takes a shower. I asked what if he's in a public bathroom. He said he waits till he gets home. I then asked if he washes his butt in the shower, and he said that the soap from his back drips down and takes care of it. At this point, I was basically gagging and told him he can't sit on any of the furniture I pay for, which is most of it, until he wipes and washes his crusty butt. He got mad and says the only reason I care is because I get screwed in mine, to which I responded that I'm a top. He got pissy and left after this and I haven't seen him since. I called his girlfriend to ask if she's heard from him, and she said he came over, explained the situation, she got grossed out, and he left her place. I feel kind of bad for not viewing this as a he doesn't know the right way situation, rather than the more antagonistic turn it took. Am I the jerk? I legitimately fail to believe that this is real. Can you really get by without wiping? Like doesn't that cause like some kind of like flare up or something? There's no way this can be real, right? All I know is, this dude's underpants are definitely caked in disgusting fecal matter. 
I mean, imagine using the washing machine after him. It's disgusting. Our next story is, am I the jerk not supporting girlfriend's sister? Some info, I've been with my girlfriend, 27 year old female, for 5 years. She loves her sister a ton which is a good thing as I believe supporting and helping your siblings as long as it doesn't ruin your own life. You'll understand why I say this later on. We just put down a mortgage on a house in the suburbs of a large city. I, 28 year old male, work in tech as a software developer with a master's degree in computer science. I make quite a lot of money so money issues never arose. Girlfriend doesn't work and does chores and cooking in the house. Both agreed on this. I was going to propose to girlfriend next year but a problem arose about two years ago. For the last two years, probably longer, girlfriend's been sending money to her younger sister, let's call her Emily. Emily got pregnant at 20 years old. Emily works as a waitress. The father is bouncing from job to job. Emily says that he's very lazy. He'll disappear hours at a time without telling Emily where he's going or what he's doing. Emily has asked my girlfriend on several occasions for money. My girlfriend, being the nice and sweet person she is, says yes all the time. It started off as paying for diapers, no problem. Then baby clothes, which also no problem. Then daycare, which I just brushed off. I talked with girlfriend saying we can't always pay for everything and that helping out for a couple of things is okay, but not everything. Girlfriend reassured me and said that it would be stopping soon once they get their feet picked up, which is fine. One day I hire a financial planner. The next day I get an email saying my account has sent approximately $50,000 for the last 10 months and has around $20,000 sitting in my account. I talk with my girlfriend and she apologizes and says she knew that I wouldn't want to keep sending her sister money and how she just cares about her sister. We've been paying for everything. Insurance, rent, car payment, daycare, clothing for all three, dinners, dates, going out expenses. It is partly my fault because I never checked my bank account. Girlfriend shows me the text messages between her and Emily saying she needs the money. I then noticed a pattern where Emily would say, hey, can you send me money? I don't have money for so and so. And of course, girlfriend says yes. I brush it off and girlfriend says she won't send anymore. The next day, girlfriend sends her a thousand dollars because they needed car repairs. I talk with girlfriend and we get into an argument where she says she'll always help her sister no matter what. I understand to an extent, we argue trying to understand each other's point of view. As stated before, we had $20,000 and now we're down to $19,000 and then how about the next time and the next time after that? on top of our own expenses. Girlfriend then decided that she needs some time alone and that she'll be at her mother's for the time being. Now I'm all alone in the house. I thought I would live in with the girl of my dreams. Am I the jerk for arguing with my girlfriend for caring about her sister too much? 100% not the jerk. She's sending money hand over fist, even money that doesn't really seem to be really hers? I wish she'll be the best of luck as she can't really see the issue here. Our next story is, am I the jerk for saying dishwashing is unskilled labor? I've been seeing this girl for 3 months who I'm pretty into. She's a professional chef, hot and basically bad as heck. She smokes pot and drinks a lot more than me but other than that I have no complaints. She's very assertive because she has to be in her line of work and luckily I'm into that if you know what I mean. She works at an upscale bar, hence the drinking where the food is really important and she's super talented so her dishes get written up in our local media which is so cool. It feels a bit like dating a celebrity when we go out because she seems to know all the industry people and we get free drinks and stuff. The problem came up when she was complaining about her job which she does a lot. She says her boss is unsupportive and won't hire more help for the kitchen. Right now she does almost everything herself. So her hours are crazy long and she's stressed all the time. I agree it doesn't make sense to be so short staffed because it seems like the bar is always busy and they make good money. The owner is an old school boomer guy who thinks he's overreacting or so she says. I don't like feeling helpless when she complains about work. So I offered to help wash dishes one night so she wouldn't have to work until 3am and we could go out. I made a lot of money in tech and retired early so I have some time on my hands. 
She looked surprised and laughed and said, thank you for the offer. I was kind of hoping she would turn me down, but the way she said it was kind of patronizing, so I pressed a bit. She went into professional mode and asked if I'd ever washed dishes before. I said yes, obviously, but not in a restaurant or anything. Now she looked really annoyed and asked why I thought I could just jump in and wash dishes without any experience. I laughed at this and said anyone could wash dishes. Teenagers do it as their first job. She got offended and said I didn't understand the realities of kitchen work because it's not easy and dishwashers are the most important person in the restaurant. I thought this was a huge exaggeration. I worked at Wendy's in high school and it's the same darn skill set. What she does is skilled. But washing dishes is not skilled labor. She said, there's no such thing as unskilled labor. And I'd take you up on your offer if I thought you wouldn't mess up service. I thought that was really rude and misguided. No such thing as unskilled labor? Are you kidding me? And told her so. She told me I was condescending and presumptuous, and she gets enough of that from her boss. The date was awkward for a while until she smiled and changed the subject, but now I can't stop wondering if her boss doesn't have a point about her overreacting. Am I the jerk? I've done a little bit of work for a proper dishwashing station for a culinary setup, and let me just say, if the restaurant is going pretty busy, you've gotta be quick on your feet with washing all of these dishes, You've got to be very quick in aligning them in the dish rack. Depending on the dishwasher, mine had this big industrial dishwasher that you actually put like a rack of plates and utensils through and you kind of pull down a lever and it just runs for like 10-15 minutes. It's almost like a strategy game that you have to do in a very quick amount of time where you fill up these racks as much as you can optimally in a way that doesn't break the dishwasher. And then let's not mention drying them off, putting them away if that's part of your job. And, depending on the dishes, you might have to give special cleaning attention to some of them. It's not just walking on in, cleaning some stuff, and leaving it out to dry for later. Our next story is, am I the jerk for refusing to spend my money on my stepdaughter's wedding? My wife passed away when my sons were 8 and 4, respectively. Since then, I remarried and my new wife and I have been married for some 11 years now. She herself was married before and had a daughter of her own from her own past marriage. Her ex-husband's story is its own saga, but suffice to say, he's alive but isn't in their life anymore. When we married, my bio children were 13, son, and 9, son, and my stepdaughter was 12. For 11 years, I tried to make some bridges. I would get her gifts and try to make sure she always got what she wanted. I did everything I could to make her happy. I would drive her to school, be at her extracurriculars, I paid for the nicest private schools for her I could, not to mention I worked day and night so I could give her the lifestyle she deserved. My wife is a housewife, a choice she made after she voluntarily quit her job in marketing. I tried my best and treated her just like my sons, but she continued to hate me. This came to a head specifically when my stepdaughter graduated about 5 years ago. While my eldest son had invited my wife, his stepmom, to his graduation, my stepdaughter refused to invite me. She had two tickets, but she only invited her mother. Her grandparents refused as they live in my wife's native country. When I asked why, she said, You're not my dad. You didn't raise me and I don't want you in my life. I was heartbroken. I tried very hard for her to like me, but she hated me. Still, I paid for her college. I paid for both of my son's colleges as well. Nevertheless, a few months back, she informed my wife that she'll be getting married. I only found out when my wife told me. What was even more devastating is that she said she would come home to celebrate, and I brought a cake and balloons and so much more. Then last minute, she changed plans. She just told my wife that she should come over to her apartment without my sons and I. I was shattered. When I did eventually call to congratulate her, she just tried to end the conversation as quickly as she could. The last thing I had asked was maybe the honor to have a father-daughter dance with her, which she had shot down. I said nothing, but then came the bill, and my wife said she needed some money for her wedding. I considered it long and hard, but clearly, as she didn't consider me as her father, I said I would not be paying for her wedding. I told my wife that she had money saved up. It was her choice to use that if she wanted, but I would not be paying for her wedding. She was furious at me. She said she barely had any money saved up and I was being an awful person. 
I've received calls from all of my wife's family telling me that I should pay, mainly her immediate family, like my father-in-law and my brother-in-law. The whole thing has become a mess. It's divided our family, but I'm still holding my ground. Am I the jerk? Clearly, she is incredibly ungrateful for you or anything you've done or tried to do. I would say Opie's honestly held on and given way more than they ever needed to, considering the treatment. And yeah, I don't blame OP for putting this boundary up for sure. Our next story is, am I the jerk for calling my sister stupid and her and her husband crappy parents from the start because of what they want to name their kid? Okay, so just a little context because this topic is incredibly touchy for me. I'm a man who was given a woman's name at birth. A good example is naming your son Alice. It's not what my name was, but it's close. My parents are hippies and gave their oldest son a girl's name to stick it to the man. And I will never forgive them for it. That name caused me to be bullied and damaged my professional life in ways I cannot describe. My sister's pregnant with her first child, a girl. She and her husband are ecstatic. It just sucks that she inherited my parents' stupid propensity to see their children as fashion statements. Last night, she revealed to the family the name of her daughter. It's Crystal, spelt K-R-X-S-T-X-L. She wants to name her daughter Kirkstxl. Confused, the name is pronounced Crystal. I already don't like that name, but it's at least appropriate. I wasn't surprised to learn that my mom helped come up with the name. When she told me, I told her it was a terrible idea. If she wants to name her Crystal, name her Crystal. She tried to explain to me why the X's are there, and I just told her that it doesn't matter. She's naming a human, not a dog. I don't care what kind of fashion statement she's trying to make. This is a person who will have to live with that name until they die or has it changed. She and my mom brushed me off as just complaining because I was never able to accept my name. I told my sister she was either being selfish, stupid, or an incredibly strong combination of the two if she thinks their daughter will want a stupid name like Kirk's to school. We got into an argument and I told her I already see her and her husband as crappy parents for using their kid to be off-brand with her name and left right after. My sister's not taking it well at all and my mom is furious with me. I'm starting to wonder if I was too harsh. I won't change my opinion on that incredibly stupid name. But I'm wondering if branding her as a crappy parent was too far. Some people really value naming their kids very unique or standout names. Personally, I do like to subscribe to the this is going to be their life outlook and wanting to give them a fairly normalish name that probably isn't going to get them bullied too much or maybe hurt their job prospects if you see a name like Kirkstiskuzzle on a resume. At the very least, spare your kid from the accumulative hours of teachers having to go through roll call and stutter over that name every single time. They might say that it's Crystal, but everybody else that ever sees that name on paper are not going to go, Oh, Crystal. Kirk's the skizzle. Our next story is, am I the jerk for putting childproof locks on the stove to stop my adult sister from using it? I, female 19, live with my stepsister Nicole, female 20. We live together in a small two-bedroom apartment whilst we both attend the same college. Our hometown is a small rural area that's around a three-hour drive away. My dad married Nicole's mother around 11 years ago. Nicole and I know each other pretty well and have spent a lot of time together. We haven't always gotten along, which siblings have, but we do consider each other sisters. Anyway, on to the story. So, me and Nicole both got sick of dorms and moved in together around two months ago. Back at home, Nicole never cooked for herself, not beyond microwave meals anyway. And now that we're both supposed to be living independently, she started cooking. Nicole keeps forgetting to turn off the stove or oven when she's finished with them. At one point, this nearly caused a full-blown house fire when she forgot about the stove whilst the paper plate of hers had been left on top of it. I kept gently reminding Nicole to turn off the oven slash stove when she's done with them but she just doesn't seem to listen. I even tried putting a sticky note around the kitchen to try to remind her. Eventually, Nicole got irritated with the reminders and told me I'm treating her like a child. I said I'm sorry if it came off that way, but she needs to remember. The problem has just kept persisting, and a near miss with a house fire happened again when Nicole forgot about the stove, and she didn't hear the smoke detector because she was blasting music on her AirPods. 
Luckily, I noticed it and was able to put it out. I tried to have a talk with Nicole and told her this needs to stop. Nicole just got mad before I could even suggest anything and told me to get off her case. She said I'm overreacting and that she can handle it. She refused to listen to anything I had to say and kept talking over me. This has started to make me really anxious, especially when Nicole is home whilst I'm out. I bought some plastic child locks for the knobs that control the stove and the oven, and I placed them on there. I know Nicole can't open childproof stuff. This way, she can't use the stove or oven when I'm out of the home. When I'm home, I can make sure nothing bad happens. Me and Nicole have similar class schedules, so this shouldn't inconvenience her too much. Nicole went ape poop when she noticed them and started screaming at me and told me I'm a control freak and bullying her. I yelled back at her and told her I wouldn't be doing it if she could act like a responsible adult. Nicole called me a witch and said I have no business controlling when she gets to cook. She's now gone to a friend's place and has blocked my phone number. My dad and stepmother got concerned after getting texts off Nicole and they kept messaging me about it, telling me I need to get Nicole to come back. Am I the jerk? I think OP's honestly doing their best to try to save Nicole's life. I'm going to be honest, I don't cook too often on the stove and most things I've learned to cook on the stove I've just kind of picked up myself. And even then, I still remember to always turn the stove back off. I mean, it's like going to the bathroom and just leaving the light on in there after you're done. Or getting done with a shower and just still leaving the faucet on and going about your day. Like, how do you forget? Our next story is... Am I the jerk for ordering food when my children are asleep so I don't have to share? Occasionally, when my four children go to bed, I'll order myself a little something from Uber Eats or DoorDash after a hard day so I don't have to share with the kiddos. Usually, since I'm always the first one to wake up, I'll put the packing beside the indoor trash can and take it out to the outdoor trash can in the morning. My children ended up waking up first that morning and seen the takeout food packaging and ended up waking me up, asking me what I ate and if they could have some. I told them there was none left and I ate it all last night and I thought that would be the end of it. But after I dropped them off at their dad's for the week, my children stay at their dad's house one week out of the month rather than just doing weekends, my children's father ended up spamming my phone with text messages accusing me of misappropriating my children funds he sends every month. My CF, children's father, gives me $100 for each child a month, which is $400 a month, which when it comes to it, it isn't much, but I'm fine with it because he usually makes up with it by buying the children what they need when an issue arises. For your information, nothing is court ordered. I have a job as a daycare worker and use my own money I make myself to buy Uber Eats or DoorDash food. He also accused me of being a bad mother because I rather order food for just myself without thinking of my children, who were with me at the time, and that I should have just waited until they were with him for the night. I had a really bad day that day and just wanted to do something to cheer myself up and sometimes food does the trick for me. If I were to order something for everyone, it would have cost a whole lot of money that I wasn't interested in spending. And if I were to share by the time my food got back to me, it would have just been the food wrapper. So, do y'all think I'm the jerk? I don't think OP's the jerk because, let's be real, I think we've pretty much all had those days where we've had a long day. And after that long day, all you really want is some kind of guilty pleasure from some food place. This isn't like OP withholding dinner from the kids, like the kids are still getting fed. In fact, as a parent, it probably would not be a good thing to indulge the kids in this because, God forbid, they probably don't need that extra food. I mean, how often do you hear the stories of parents who have a secret chocolate stash somewhere? Because the kids are going to get to it otherwise, right? It's not too far off from just that kind of thing. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy Am I the Jerk here story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.